This is Math 432 Applied Combinatorics. I'm Professor Asaf, and today we are going to be discussing weak compositions. So what is that? Let me give you a definition here, maybe. We'll start with that. A weak composition is just a sequence of non-negative integers. That's it. Um, we think about the structure of it in a certain way, but let's write this down first. A sequence of... Um, of non-negative integers. So let's do some examples. That's always a good way to start. Um, <clears throat> here's an example. We could take the sequence 3, 0, 3, 1, 4, 0. We're going to say that this is a composition of the numbers that these add to. So this is a composition of, usually we're going to denote this k equals 3 plus 0 plus 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 0, which I believe is 11. And we'll talk about the number of parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, into 6 parts. So that's certainly something that we can think about, and we can think about enumerating these. Of course, they're infinitely many unless I add some kind of constraint. So let's constrain both the size, which is what we say it's a composition of, and the number of parts as well, um, because we could always just keep adding zeros and get it to be infinite. So here's another example. Let's take k equal to something nice and small like 2, and let's take n equal to 3. This means my numbers have to add up to 2, and I have three of the numbers, okay? So maybe that's worth writing down as a1 plus a2 plus a3 equals two. These are the sequences that I'm gonna to try to write down. Okay, well, what can, I, what can I have? Well, I could have two, zero, zero. I like to generate things lexicographically. Doing it in a systematic order makes sure that I get them all, and it also shows me a little bit about the structure of these combinatorial objects. So I'm gonna keep the first part as big as possible, as long as possible. This is about as long as I can keep the number two here. So now I'm gonna make this one smaller. And I think about how would I program this. Now I'll make this next part as big as possible. One, okay, and now this is the first part I can change. I'll decrement that one. So I'll get one, zero, one. That's another one. Okay, well that's it for starting there, but I could keep going. I could start with a zero, of course, and then I could make the next part as big as possible. I could start with zero, one, one. Or I could start with two zeros and then have a two, and that's it. So the number of what we'll say compositions of two into three parts is equal to six. Now we've seen the number six so many times. So we want to think to ourselves, what does that mean? What is the number six? Well, six could be three factorial, and it could be four choose two. And in fact, in this case, it's actually four choose two. So here's the theorem. If we want to enumerate compositions of k into n parts, it's just this multi-choice coefficient. n choose k with repetition, which we've seen before from our stars and bars arguments, is n plus k minus one choose k. So let's think about why that is. And the hint is that, well, we just talked about stars and bars. So, um, here we, let's just, well, sorry, let's check our formula first. So our theorem says that we should be getting here, we should get three multi choose two, which is the same as three plus two minus one, choose two, and four choose two is one of our familiar ways to write six. Okay, so the theorem checks out in this example. That's good, there's no typo probably. Um, let's prove it though. That's the best way to understand why a theorem is true. So. Again, because this comes from the stars and bars argument, let's think of it as stars and bars. Let's think of the example um, that we had before, and let's think about how could we represent our example in terms of stars and bars. So that example from last time, from the previous slide, is uh, 3, 0, 3, 1, 4, 0. Okay, how can I think of this as stars and bars? Now the hint is in the structure here. Remember this, if I'm thinking of this as stars and bars, then I'm gonna have K is gonna tell me my number of stars, right? This adds up to 11, so I'm gonna have that K, which in this case is 11, is going to equal the number of stars. 
So you can check that I have 11 stars. Now, how do we get bars? Well, the stars and bars argument has not n bars, but n minus one. The spaces between your stars are where you put the bars. n minus one in this case, uh, let's see, n is six. So this is gonna be six minus one is equal to the number of bars. And we can check that I do indeed have five bars. So I've planned ahead. So how would we represent this composition in terms of stars and bars? Well, I would do three stars for the first part, and then I would put a bar. Well, let's see if I can do it diagonally maybe just so it all fits, and then I'll put a bar. And then I have zero stars, okay? So I'll just take another bar. And then three more stars. So you see I'm just reading the parts of my composition. And then I'm gonna have a bar, one star, a bar, and then I have four stars, and then a bar, and no more stars. So the way that I would represent this composition in terms of stars and bars is exactly like this. And that, in fact, is my proof, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that K, we're gonna have K is gonna be the sum of the parts of your composition. So this is your number of stars. And then you're gonna put, since there are N terms, you're gonna put N minus one bars between. And now the theorem follows just from the classic stars and bars counting. How do we count it? Well, we can choose the positions of the stars or the positions of the bars. This is choosing that. It's also N plus K minus one, choose N minus one, which is another familiar way to write it. So I'll put that one down too. N plus K k minus one, choose n minus one, of course, is an equivalent way. So the number of weak compositions of k into n parts is n multi-choose k, and we have this nice combinatorial way to realize it.